While approval of a second coronavirus vaccine is in the works, COVID cases surpassed the 17 million mark today in the United States. That's according to Johns Hopkins. The university is also reporting more than 308,000 people have died from the disease nationwide. Meanwhile, government officials are receiving harsh criticism over their handling of the pandemic. A recent article in The Atlantic accuses both state and federal leaders of continuing to give conflicting guidance to the American public in regard to the spread of the virus. Joining us now is the author of that article, Derek Thompson. Derek, welcome. Great to have you with us. So where did the federal and state governments fail or fall short in battling the coronavirus pandemic? The point that I wanted to make in this article is that I think a lot of time when we focus on the people who are responsible for the government failures related to COVID-19, we focus on the federal level, we focus on Donald Trump, we focus on the fact that lots of Republicans have been COVID deniers. But I also want to point out the ways that Democratic governors and Democratic mayors of blue states and blue cities have also misunderstood some scientific basics about this disease and how it spreads. For example, you've seen both Los Angeles and cities like Philadelphia make it illegal, according to city ordinance, for people to hang out outside and share a socially distanced beer or in you know, Venice Beach go for a walk with someone who doesn't live in their household. This is nuts. What we should be doing in cities is encourage people to claim that small bit of normalcy that they can actually have by spending safe time outside with people if they you know, are bundled and if they are somewhat socially distanced, because this disease simply doesn't spread outside with the same efficiency with which it spreads in unventilated indoor spaces. So I think this goes to show that across the country, we still don't have, at the elite level, a clear understanding of what this disease is. It is essentially a talking disease. It spreads for, most, for the most part between people that are talking to each other in unventilated indoor spaces. Control that and allow everything else. That is a sensible way to address the virus while also allowing people to live as normal lives as possible. And do you have some specific examples of guidance or non-guidance from specific political leaders that uh, you highlight as having done more harm than good? Well, I think, for example, you look at a city like Los Angeles, which I adore, where my sister lives, where I've spent a lot of time. A fantastic city. But there was one point where Los Angeles made uh, closed their playgrounds while they left their malls open. Now, this is a disease that spreads efficiently in indoor and ventilated spaces and does not spread efficiently in outside spaces and particularly doesn't seem to have a tremendous effect on young children, on infants. So why in the world would you open up the indoor spaces and close down the playgrounds? Now, Los Angeles seems to have reversed this ordinance. I, I, I think it's great for uh, leaders of all stripes to recognize the errors that they make. But this is unfortunately a perfect example of misunderstanding the science. What you want to do is control the crowding of people in unventilated indoor spaces, while for the most part encouraging people to lead normal-ish lives if they can do so outside, especially in a socially distanced way. So, you know, let's talk for a minute about what can be done differently, you know, going forward, because we're still seeing high rates in a lot of places. We are certainly nowhere near out of the woods yet. You propose what you call a sensible national strategy. Can you explain the main points of that strategy and how you would get it across in an environment that is overwhelmed by misinformation about this virus? Well, I, I think, you know, I don't see a lot of political leaders giving people a kind of rules and reasons based approach to COVID-19 policies. Sometimes it seems like the rules are completely random and the reasons are disconnected. But it, look, if I were a mayor, if I were a governor, what I would tell people is this. What we're dealing with is a talking disease. I know that sounds strange. What we're dealing with is a virus that spreads through aerosols that are most likely to be transmitted via talking. 
And those aerosols are most likely to infect people in unventilated indoor spaces. So let's first focus on closing down and bailing out indoor unventilated businesses to keep people safe while not destroying the economy and destroying people's lives. While at the same time, we leave lots of space open outside, create ways for people to reclaim that bit of normalcy when they leave their house and want to hang out with people who aren't in their household. That's really where I would begin. There's lots of little tiny details that you can futz with along the edges of that policy. But fundamentally, what you're trying to do is control the spread of an indoor talking disease. And that's what I would call it, an indoor talking mm -hmm. disease, over and over and over so that people understood why they should wear masks, why they should socially distance, why they should stay away from unventilated indoor spaces, and why, when they can, they should go outside. You know, unfortunately, COVID became politicized very early on. Of course, it's a virus, doesn't care what your political inclinations are. It's an equal opportunity uh, disease. So how would you cut through that politicized nature in order to explain the science to people? God, I, I wish I could tell you that I had a solution to cutting through American polarization. Uh, I, I think, frankly, that uh, falls under the category of um, holiday miracles, like your previous segment was talking about with the, uh, uh, the Hanukkah effect with the leftover uh, uh, Pfizer vaccine. Look, I, I think that if, if you're a politician, um, if you're an, an, a leader in this country, you have to accept that we just are more polarized than ever. And that polarization is making, is, it's, cre it's, it's honeycombing the media landscape and allowing people to live inside of silos where they aren't necessarily going to hear from the rest of the media. That's, that's just a fact of American life right now. But I wouldn't allow that fact to change the fundamental message that I'm trying to send, the rules and reasons-based approach to COVID-19 uh, to the war on COVID-19. And that is to say, once again, to repeat over and over, this is an indoor talking disease, and that is why we need masks, that is why we need social distancing, and that's why we need to, when we can, shut down unventilated indoor spaces. All right, Derek Thompson, thank you so much for joining us. We appreciate it. Thank you.